Hi everyone, today we're going to be contouring and bronzing. I get asked so much, so many questions about this. People ask me, what can I use for contour? Can I use my bronzer? Do I use it differently? Can I contour and bronze at the same time? And so many questions, which is very understandable. It's quite confusing. And I usually just refer them back to a video that I made about eight years ago, which was called something like how to contour. But when I watched that recently, I thought, well, A, the sound is really bad in it. Uh, secondly, I think the technology and the platform of YouTube is so much better now that all the colors look so much better now. And thirdly, back then, believe it or not, there was hardly any good um, shades for contouring that was available in sort of mainstream makeup. There was a few, but it was mainly, you'd have to go to like a, a professional makeup shop to buy all those great contoury shades. So makeup's come on leaps and bounds. So as you can see, I'm back in my studio, which it's been at least four months since I've been here. So it feels very nice to be back. Um, I know that quite a lot of you said underneath the videos when I was from home that um, you really liked videos from my house. So just to let you know, I am going to mix it up in future if you think this is a good idea that I'll do some from here, some maybe from the front of my studio, which is where all the pictures are on the wall and all the mirrors and all the action happens. And I will still occasionally do films from my house as well. So that there'll be a real mix. So do let me know in the comments if you like that idea. So straight on to, I'm gonna start with contouring. So what is contouring? Contouring is shading and shaping. So it's, like when you're at school at, in art classes and you were asked to draw an apple or something and you would shade with dark, a darker pencil or you know, using your pencil, you would shade around the edge. And what that would do, it would give the apple its shape and make it look round and apple shaped really. It's exactly the same with makeup. It's really just the theory of shade and light and how when you use shade and light and light and dark, you can create more structure and more shape to a face. You can also chisel out your features a little bit more, which is why, of course, contouring is so popular. So I'm going to be using powder products today. You can, of course, use cream. And I think a lot of the tips I'm going to give in terms of shades are exactly the same, whether you use powder or whether you use cream. It would only be the application that would be different. So. So I'm gonna start with me, but I'm gonna give tips about all different skin tones. So for me, when you think about contouring a face, you think about adding shadow. So if you were to look at my face and then see it in shadow, I don't know if that casts a shadow, but when you see the color of the skin in shadow, that's the color of contour. So it's not, you don't do that and see sort of bright orange, for example, in the way that you do with, sometimes bronzers can be very bright. You see, it's like when you're drawing or painting as well, and if you don't draw or paint, if you go to an art gallery and you look at whether it be a portrait or whether it be a landscape, when you look at the way the artist paint shadows, what they'll do is they will add black paint, which is shadow, but it's not just black paint, they will add, the colors of the environment. So if it's a face, they will add the tones of the face. So whether it be deep skin, light skin, they will add the richness, the red, the yellows, the pinks, all within those tones. So it's creating a natural looking shadow that we're aiming to do with contouring, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, so it is about creating this, this shade. I'm going to show you some different sort of shades and why I think they're not good. Some bronzers actually work really well. Things that are on the market and called bronzers, I would look at them and say, that's a great contour shade. Other times I see things that are marketed as contour shades and I think, well, that's a good bronzer, but I wouldn't use it to contour. So I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to use products which are quite widely available. So hopefully some of you may already have these products. So starting with a very, very light skin tone, I would look at this one, which is the Hula Light, which is to be fair, a bronzer. And I would say, yes, that's a great bronzer for a very, very light skin tone. 
This one, however, which is the Fenty, I'd say you could actually contour with that as well for a very light skin because it does have a little bit of the black pigment in. It's got a bit of the shadow in. So I don't know if you can see the difference there. If I was going in with, um, actually these are really good examples of contour shades for light to medium skin tones. These are the Kevin Aquan ones. And you can see how as a bronzer, they might be a little dirty because they do have that shadowy little bit of black pigment in, um, but they would work really, really well. So for me, what I would use is, I could use this medium by um, Kevin O'Quan because it's not too warm. It's got a bit of the cool tones that I have naturally in my face, although I do cheat and um, warm my face up with a little bit more yellow, usually in my foundation, so it matches my neck and my body. Um, but with this one, I could definitely get away with it. Another one that I feel I could get away with, and I'll show you one that I couldn't get away with at the same time so you can see what I'm talking about, is um, these are by The Balm. And I'd say that I could get away with this as a contour because it's got a little bit of the coolness in there and it's got the shadow in there. So even though the intensity of this colour is not much deeper, it's far too vibrant to be a shadow. Um, this is a good example of a great contour shade. A little too dark for me, but it could be good um, for a light to medium skin. If you went quite lightly with it. As you get towards deeper skin tones, then you need all the richness. You want the shadow and you need all the richness. So the colors that I would suggest could be anything ranging from, well, you can see how many great different undertones there are within um, all the different. So even just looking at these, like some are more golden, some have more red. Um, this one has more blue in, you can see it's almost purpley. These are great because they are, they've got the shadowiness of a good contour, but they also have all the undertones in there. So you're able to match the tones in your contour powder to the undertones within your skin. So we're back to that painting again. When you're painting shadow, you're including all the undertones of the skin. You're just making it deeper and shadowier. So I'm gonna start with a brush that I would use. I like a pointy brush for contouring. And what I do with cheekbones, because that's mainly the area that, of course you can contour all different areas of your face, but mainly let's just concentrate today on cheekbones. So when you think about your cheekbones, the, the place where cheekbones normally stick out the most is here and here. Your cheekbones don't stick out all the way to here. So when you are sculpting them or actually uh, contouring them, I would always start almost at the ear there and I would come, let me put some product on because there's no point me talking about it if I don't do it. So I'm gonna use this one, which is a slightly cool tone. It is a, it's supposed to be a bronzer actually, but for me that's a shadowy, more of a shadowy shade. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of the Kevin O'Quan, which is the, um, the medium which I've now lost. How could I lose that? There it is. So I'm gonna mix those two together. This is quite a long brush, I need quite a stiff brush, but. So starting here, I almost want my focus to be there. And then that first inch is ever so important. That's where you want most of the shading the reason you want the most of the shading there, let me explain, is because, as I say, cheekbones don't stick out all the way, and if you make it as intense here as it is here, it's so unnatural. It's If you're doing a skull makeup, then it's perfect, or a skeleton makeup for um, Halloween, then that's exactly what you need to do. But in real life, most of your shading that you would get from your cheekbones or your shadow from your cheekbones would be the intense bit would be here and then as it came out it would become less and less and you'd almost want to, it to end almost like a little 
thin point there. It needs to become thinner and thinner as well. So I'm just mapping out the sort of shape. So from the front, we're not seeing anything kind of dirty here or, but we are getting this sort of the height of the cheekbone. Obviously this needs a blend in. So this is a really good time, would be a good time to use bronzer as well because, and I'll show you that in a minute, how you can use bronzer to diffuse your initial um, shading. So if you can see my cheekbone now, it's just emphasized, it's not too harsh. So I'm doing exactly the same. Blend those edges. I think the main thing is that you don't want to have, although it, in a way it is, it needs to be some kind of a line because it is a shadow from a bone. So it's, it's casting a shadow. However, you don't want that line to have any edge to it, so it needs to feel like it's concentrated in one place, but the edges are very, very diffused. Do you always have to use contour? Absolutely not. If you're, I don't use a lot of contour myself because I've got quite a thin-ish face, so I would only ever use a small amount. I wouldn't go in too heavy because I could look quite gaunt in the face. So I think it's something that is, um, you know, some people can handle a lot more and they, benefit from more contouring and other people maybe feel that um, it just doesn't suit them so it's you don't have to wear contour. Another place I would use contour is jawline and this is it would be the same technique so the idea is that the bone is almost stopping and then there there is a shadow underneath onto the jawline so it's creating that illusion really um, of a shadow where there isn't one. So just going slightly under the jawline very very softly and then diffusing onto the neck to create again a fake shadow which is exactly what this is as well works really well and this is something that in everyday life be quite subtle with it i mean it's something that if I'm working with clients and they're on TV or they're doing something, you can really chisel, um, you know, in strong lighting, you can get away with a hell of a lot of this uh, contouring. But in real life, you want to go definitely air on the side of caution. And then as someone who's got quite a long chin, I would do a touch just on the edge of the chin there, just to slightly shorten the length. You can also reduce the width of foreheads by going just into the temples. I'm going to be using bronzer here in a little bit because it's a good bronzing area as well, but very good to go in first with your contour colour if it's an area that you want to, you feel that you want to kind of reduce width. Oh, and I forgot to say the main thing. It has to be a matte powder. How did I forget to say that? So because shadow doesn't have shine and glitter in, shadow is shadow, it's flat, it's matte. So contour should be a matte product, whether it's a powder or if it's a cream, it should also be not matte, but a cream that doesn't contain glitter. So a flat matte product. Now, another area that you can, if you want, Contour, of course, is your nose. I don't really tend to contour my nose, but I'll show you how to do it. You go down the side of your, either side of your nose bone. So what you're trying to cheat is a thinner nose bone here. So you're trying to narrow that down. I really don't suit this, so I'm not gonna do too much of it. I really don't suit it at all. It's very good for correcting if you have bumps or things that you personally feel that you want to change in any way. And if you can see, I'm starting to get a sort of thinner nose. And then you can bring it all the way down to the end. And then at the end, depending on the shape of your nose, I do recommend using this kind of a brush. So it's quite, again, a more of a fluffy brush. So you're not ending up with just a line that you can see. And this is where the color is so important because you can imagine if this was too orangey or too red or just looked like a kind of orangey bronzer, it would look very, very strange. 
And then at the end, depending on the shape of your nose, you might want to reduce the, put a little shading there, which gives you a shorter nose. Just takes the tip off there. And then I would always go in with a sponge if I'm doing clients or back in with a brush, or I even um, use a brush with a little translucent powder on. And I would always, always, always blend that extremely well. So just going back and re-blending. So, so it was time for a re-blend. So just to summarize, think of contour as when you're contouring, you're pushing an area of your face backwards. It's receding backwards. Like when you highlight or you see someone with very highlighted cheekbones, it almost brings that area of the face more forward and makes it more prominent. Whereas clever contouring or shading puts an area into shadow and therefore pushes it back. So it tricks the brain into thinking that you're not looking at a flat surface, which faces on anyway, but it's extending that and really giving more of a three-dimensional look so it's, it's it's pushing it and I think what I love about this area of makeup of contouring of shading of, of highlighting is that it's so reminiscent of art classes and it is about creating a shape and dimension um, in, in a painting really and it's um, it's exactly the same with faces so on to bronzer now, and there are so many great shades of bronzer available now for all skin tones, and this is, it's fantastic, because as a makeup artist that started such a long time ago, we used to have to make our own bronzers because there just wasn't the range of shades available, but now I'm just gonna show you a few. So bronzer is about mimicking how your skin looks when it's been in the sun. So it could be honey toned, caramelly toned, it could have a lot of red in it, a lot of peachiness in it. Um, it could be dark bronze. I mean, everyone bronzes in a different way. So there's, I think, think about how you naturally bronze anyway. And whether you, if your skin does get a little pink with the bronze, look for those pink toned shades. For me, for example, I'm gonna show you one that's good and one that isn't. So say Hula Caramel, sadly would not be good for me, although I'd love to bronze this color. This is, um, I think this would suit, it's very yellow toned. It would suit um, maybe somebody with more of a mid-toned skin, maybe olive undertones, um, that that would really suit. But this one will definitely suit me more because it has, it's a touch less yellow. It's got the bronziness, but it also has, a little bit of the pink tones in as well. So I'm going to go for this one, which is just called medium. And I'm gonna show you how I would apply. For bronzer, I think you can use a bigger brush. You don't need one of those pointy brushes, unless you're someone that just uses bronzer and wants it to look sort of sculpty. But um, I'm going to use this brush here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it firstly to just blend in my contour. I'm also going to go onto my nose and onto my cheeks. And when you're using bronzer, I think it's a really good idea to kind of get it onto the brush, tap onto your hands, because it's something that it's always nice to build up. You don't want to be taken by surprise and you know put it on and it's way, way, way too dark. And also you can get away with using shades which are maybe too dark for you, but you can build up slowly and use them in quite a sort of thin way. Now I'm going to go up onto my contour area and I'm going to go across the top of my forehead because this is an area where if I was out in the sun, of course it would be very exposed, the top of my forehead. So I'm coming around there and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm trying not to go lower than the contour line because I want to keep that sort of sharpness, if you like, between the bottom of the contour and the lighter area underneath. So I'm really sort of blending the contour up onto the cheeks a little bit more to create that look. And then again, I'm going across the nose. I love it on eyelids bronzer just makes the whites of your eyes really pop and then I would do also the center of my neck it tends to be an area that never ever sees the sun and it's usually light in the rest of the face so 
if you add a bit more color there and then just step back and if you want to add more you can but build up slowly so next I'm going to go in with highlighter just to show you how we can get even more dimension. So if I was looking for, high, for a highlighter now, because I've done a bronzy look, I wouldn't use a white. I might use that on my skin if it was a whole different look of makeup. But what's going to go well with this look now would be this shade, which has got a touch of the goldiness of the bronzer that I've used. And then I would just pop that onto the top of my cheekbone. And again, we want to choose a shade which sort of blends in with the kind of contour and bronze that we've done. You could also have a palette for deeper skin tones. The reason being is that we don't want to have this image of one shade of contour very separate from then there's a bronzer which almost doesn't sit with that and then there's a highlighter which jars with the other two and you lose all the seamlessness. And then I'm going to finish off with blush. The reason you don't have to do this, you can just stay bronze. I personally love when I've done bronzer to do a pop of something quite vibrant. It can be a very small area, but say this, I love this OPV palette. I would actually go in with this when I've done a bronze look. I'll show you how I do it. I take most of the color off and then I just pop it. You know the way when you've been in the sun, even though you get sort of bronzy, there'll be a little redness that comes in, which you won't want necessarily all over, but it just, I feel like it just freshens up the look of the bronze. I mean, it's the tiniest amount. I actually wouldn't do any more than that, but it just lifts it. And I do that a lot on clients. So it was, I've tried to make that quite quick. I think I could do a sort of 10 hour masterclass on contouring, on highlighting, on all of these things, but I just wanted to do a quick 101 and um, I hope that was really helpful. And if you have any questions, if these types of more in-depth 101 type videos, what you wanna see, please let me know. Or if you want more information about contour, also please do let me know. And in the meantime, Stay safe, lots of love, take care, bye.